name is Philip Bardesol. I'm the Vice President for Industrial Equipment Industry in Dassault System. I've been with Dassault System for 10 years now. So my name is Alain Bernard and uh, I am uh, Emeritus Professor at uh, Ecole Centrale de Nantes. I have been working in the manufacturing and uh, industrial engineering field for 43 years now. And why so? For three reasons. First, supply chain. Supply chain are disrupted right now. Let's look at just the chips. Right now, it's a, it's a nightmare to find what you need, for example, at the uh, uh, core of the machines, the PLCs. Mm -hmm. The supply of PLCs is really an issue now. The second is sustainability, of course, because this is going to be an imperative for everyone starting with a tougher legislation in Europe and California. And the third one is in manufacturing, we cannot find people to operate the lines. So uh, we will have shortages of people. We will not find the right, uh, the, the people with the right training. And that could, all three could put a factory to a standstill. But my feeling is that we may have some solutions at the time already. We are on the right way concerning sustainability uh, because we, we try to, to have more modularity and adaptability and resilience also in the manufacturing systems. If we think that in the uh, seen from the machine maker in the after sell service uh, macro process we are going to see the same revolution we saw in engineering 20 years ago, which is, it, it was the DMU, the digital mock-up 20, 25 years ago, <clears throat> even 30 sometimes. Uh, we saw the, the 3D as being the universal uh, mean or language um, in order to, no longer the 2D, but the 3D and then people were um, having meetings around around the 3D and they were sharing the 3D. I, I, I personally believe that this is happening now in after-sales service and we have customers that are asking us in, in RFQs, in requests for quotation for PLM, Product Lifecycle Management or PLM++. It's not only engineering, it's engineering, manufacturing, and now it's also after sales service. And, and there, what, as we said, what they want is not generic twins, but as they get an order, they want a specific twin to do the order fulfillment internally. And then once they've installed the machine, they want a, an engineering twin and a service twin for the next 20, 30 years. And if they can project all the services that they are currently offering with the phone numbers, the contact numbers, the, uh, the right spare parts, not generic spare parts, the spare parts for that machine, the retrofit uh, opportunities, the um, sustainability, sustainability calculations or the improvement on the energy consumption or the uh, CO2 emission, um, or everything that the company, the, the machine company wants to offer, if they could articulate this around the virtual twin in operation, the simplified virtual twin in operation, then we would see the same revolution we saw 20 years ago in engineering happening in service. Well, what is interesting also is maybe to develop some economical models. Uh, we, we, we spoke about uh, Frugal, uh, but uh, Frugal is not on, only uh, doing less with less. Uh, it is uh, to do something which is uh, just enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we are in the, let's say, in the generation where uh, my feeling is that young people ask for this kind of uh, of products, of course. Not, not luxurious ones or, uh, or costly ones, but yeah. the just necessary, but enough uh, with respect to less impact on, on our environment in order to have more sustainability behind that. And this is same for production systems. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe uh, 
we we will have some some efficient models to evaluate that but it is always a, a matter of chicken and egg yeah because uh, world is the evolution of the the, the the ecosystem the value chains and so on is permanent and the models are running behind that in order to be uh, exactly or to fit exactly with the with what we are expecting from these models with respect to the evaluations that we have to take into account I think the frugality will also go with uh, and it, it could be it could be a paradox in a way with more automation because um, as we will lack more and more people to operate machines and lines in in the factory we will we will need to go for more automated plants uh, they are already much more automated than they were 20 years ago but uh, Given the scarcity of, uh, of people and operators, we need to go a step further. And of course, uh, this includes not only the machine, the line, but also the logistics with the um, AGVs or, or the uh, uh, autonomous mobile robots around, around the factory. Um, and therefore, we need to think about plants full as uh, automated as possible and to integrate the automation of the plant from the very beginning. It means not only the PLCs in the machines, but the SCADA for the plant, mm -hmm. but also new types of uh, uh, software with the, with the AGVs or, or the autonomous mobile robots, because the AMRs, they have there is part of the software that is in the robot, but there is part of the software that is with fleet management. And that's the orchestration of all this, probably with an, with an MES, uh, Manufacturing Execution, Execution System, System, or a MOM. Super, super interesting, because we, now we have to aggregate different technologies in the plant and ensure more automation, but also more agility for the plant and for the complete value network. Okay, so if we take it first from the um, viewpoint of the user, the user of the machine, user of the line. Uh, first, we should have a lot of um, ergonomy studies, meaning uh, how we can use virtual mannequins in order to optimize the posture and in order to, for, for uh, security reasons, in order also to avoid a number of uh, illness that could, could come from, um, you know, the wrong, wrong posture. The second thing is that we can use more augmented reality to help the operator. When you change products frequently, um, if you can guide the person exactly what he where he needs to pick up the, the part, which part and what to do, to do with work instructions. Um, that is um, easing the task and especially when you look, you're looking for agility, you will change product frequently. So you need to help them uh, with augmented reality and with specific uh, work instructions, manufacturing work instruction. What about um, uh, 3D printing, do you think it could help also attracting, attracting people into manufacturing? Definitely. 3D printing is uh, one of the recent technologies, not new but recent, that uh, help all generations to interact uh, with the link between digital and physical. Very easily you model, very uh, interactively and uh, very simply, easily, and then you go for additive manufacturing and 3D printing, and then you get your object uh, on a 3D printer. So it makes it much more attractive, definitely. But also the, the fact that we have all these virtual twins, you can train operators easily, and you can train them on the virtual model, playing what-if scenarios so that, first, it's, it's much more fun for them. They learn quicker, and they can be also operational quicker. Now, that is from, from the line user, from the machine maker. When I ask my customers about, I always ask the same question, which is out of the next 10 
development engineers you're going to hire, which discipline? In, in the last two years, I always get the same answer. It's nine, well, seven, eight, nine out of 10 in software. So that means that software is going to be, we're going to have software design machines. And uh, that is making the world of mechatronics, if, if you will, mm -hmm. super interesting because the mechanical is no longer the, the master um, discipline. It's really uh, spread uh, across mechanical, electrical, electronics, fluidic, hydraulic, pneumatics, and especially now software. It is also up to us in, uh, at Dassault System to um, uh, welcome this new generation of software developers for the new pieces of equipment. And this is what we are currently working on, which is the um, uh, connection between the PLM and the ALM, uh, the product lifecycle management and the application lifecycle life management, which should be part of the PLM. But currently, these two um, these two disciplines, they are not talking enough. They're not working enough uh, together and, and the software is growing. So uh, in the coming years, we will work with the, these two communities with our main customers in order, in order to bring them together in one platform. So looking at 2030, I believe that we will have much more of equipment as a service. And what it means for machine makers is that they will still have to sell the machine, actually, but they will sell it to a third party, maybe a, something called a, a special purpose vehicle that has been created to host the assets of a plant. So the machine maker will sell to, the, to this uh, SPV and then the SPV will contract with the machine user per part produced or per outcome. Um, and this will, would align the interests of all three parties, the special purpose vehicle, the machine OEM and the line user along the interest of the last one, of the line user. And especially uh, try, everybody will in earnest try to increase the OEE, the overall equipment efficiency of the machine. What is very much interest, in, interesting for the future uh, engineers, for example, is to be uh, at the center of the game as uh, technical uh, specialists, but also uh, speciali specialists of strategic organizations. Yeah. Uh, with respect to given fields of activities uh. and mostly to accelerate innovation also. We, we know that uh, in Europe we have uh, EIT manufacturing, which is uh, an innovation accelerator, and uh, we need to favor the development of new projects, but also to, to make them sustainable from the beginning, which yeah. is always a challenge. And this kind of organization, in order for a start startupper, for example, to, yeah. to find the right grape of companies, let's say, yeah. uh, able to give the right service in order to help for the ramp up development of their uh, activities could be also uh, an interesting evolution, uh, especially for, for France to reindustrialize, but also for, for the global activity. I think it's a, it could be a very good approach. Uh, but what, what is important is to have strong collaborations with companies and to push uh, our young engineers uh, within the companies in order to vehiculate this kind of, uh, of idea and approach uh, to uh, help in uh, transferring the knowledge of an engineer, I mean knowledge in uh, engineering, uh, to the world of uh, the, the sustainable uh, economy uh, yeah. in, in, uh, in the market of uh, even consumable or uh, the daily, daily uh, necessary objects that we have uh, today, we need today. I think it could be a, a generic model for the, the, the global activity 
Uh, and uh, it is not so easy uh, with respect to the intellectual property or even the sharing of the value and so on, exactly what you said, but maybe the smart contracts could be uh, one solution to do so through IoT. And, so and, on. and as, we, as we're moving from the engineering disciplines to system engineering for the product itself, we need also the engineers to play a key role in designing and modeling the value network. Exactly. And if they and this is going to be fun because it's going to be super important for sustainability, super important for agility. And if they, if they get into it, playing with the model, uh, playing what if scenarios on the global model and finding models that are more sustainable, more frugal, in conjunction with the product, I think that would be a very noble task for them and a very fun task as well.